Here we are. It's time for Hand of Fate 2. I played the first game on this channel up into almost completion. I beat all the story stuff mainly, but yeah, there's diminishing returns at some point when you're trying to do every single quest chain and you're like, just draw the right card, god damn. So I got like 90% done with the side stuff and 100% done with the series of bosses you do to quote unquote beat the game. And I have not kept up to date at all. So I have no idea what's different in Hand of Fate 2. All I know is they made a sequel after several years, and as a character creator... First one was fun. Looking forward to interest to seeing what changed. It'll be totally novel for me. Except for the part where it's a... Probably an iterative sequel over a game I've played before. Your memories are fading even now gone to form the soul of the game we play. These pieces are new, as are the stakes. Life, death, and vengeance. We must ride, for time is short, and you have much to learn. Make your first choice, and let us set these wheels in motion once more. These cards represent your history and our game. We know where they end, for you are here. Therefore, these cards must guide you to my side. Let us see what the journey holds. The fool steps into nothingness because they know no better. In the same way, you must step into the void. You are a blank slate and together we will write your history. I feel like he's opening by insulting me immediately. So the last game ended with us defeating him, and I thought it seemed at the time like he was gone for good, but he seems to very clearly not be. Forest ambushed, you've stumbled many miles through the forest in search of the thieves who robbed you. Though exhausted and hungry, you are determined to reclaim your father's amulet. You can finally... You finally catch sight of the thieves hacking at a large tree and arguing amongst themselves. So you can keep a nice, safe, clean distance. Or you can move closer to eavesdrop, increasing the chance that you might get caught, but maybe you glean some useful information. And in a lot of games, when you get a choice like this, one answer... The, 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 oftentimes the actual outcomes of the decisions are like predetermined and you know what's going to happen, but in Hand of Fate 1 at the very least, you'd pick a choice and then both had a chance of having good and bad things happen in many cases. Which makes things even more interesting. Let's take a risk and move in. Every uh, element of the game has been improved. This is still here? That seem at first glance familiar. Do not worry. You will soon understand the nuances. Are you suggesting that this works differently than it used to? This is actually the one thing I, li I l don't like about Hand of Fate, is the card thing. Because I, I, games of chance, I feel like should just be getting a games of chance, but this is like the... Look for the... Look for, look for the... Uh, which cup has the ball in it game. Where like you try to pick... You can, you can kind of see the motion of them, and I'm like, oh, I just want a, a dice roll. We're good. Creeping forward, you overhear their leader spouting orders. It's simple, he says. The idiots walk down the road, you push over the tree and jump out. They'll be too scared to put up a fight, and we'll, be, we'll get rich. Why don't we just jump out and stab them, one retorts. Another hooded figure chimes in. Yeah, corpses don't put up a fight either. Well, part of it is you, you push out the tree to stop the cart, because otherwise they might just leave, and, you know, being a murderer has more consequences, maybe. Frustration arises in the leader's voice. The Empire doesn't care if a few farmers lose some sprouts, but drop a corpse on the royal road and the, and the place will be filled with soldiers before you've even spent the coin. We don't need that trouble. Now quiet, here they come. You soon spot a group of farmers coming around the corner, bringing their wares to market. Three of toil. We have a toil deck that represents farmers now. I don't remember that being there before. With greed being the deck that represents the bandits. It's four bandits and a leader, so if we go into a fight, that'll be four basic units and one 
elite unit. Thieves, the thieves follow the tree into the path with uh, of the unsuspecting farmers and leap out, weapons brandished. Give us all your food. We can either defend the farmers, offer to help the farmers, warning that it won't come for free, or help the thieves with their extortion. You can go all over the place. You can valiantly defend the farmers, or you can help them for a, a, a profit, or you can straight up join the thieves. And this is a big variation of character types. And this is my favorite type of character to play in a lot of these games. Offered help the farmers, warning them it won't come for free. We have no gold, shrieked the terrified farmers, but half our crop is yours if you protect us. The thieves eye you nervously, the farmers look at you, hopefully, except you draw your weapon with practiced skill. Well, you hear the leader's voice. You lads handle this, I'll meet you when you're done. The leader's gonna leave and let the, th and let the other people go. So no elite unit, ooh. Well, this looks different and it's not running very smoothly. There we go. I'm sorry, are we playing sliders? Thug, violence for the sake of violence, and theft for the sake of money. Thieves attack frequently and can evade standard attacks, making heavy weapons less effective. Interesting. Hey, there's the buttons. I was about to I was about to pause the game and look them up if it wasn't gonna tell me. So X is attack, Y is defend, B is bash, A is evade. And then left trigger is finisher, right trigger is weapon ability, move on camera. Does defend mean uh counter? I think it still does, right? We'll see. Ow. I'm gonna have to ask you to stop. Okay, oop. There we go. Ouch. There we go. Character looks a bit different this time around. Oh, wow, he does not... They do not get stunned by your normal attacks, so they'll just start countering you in the moment. Alright, there's definitely a difference in the feeling of the flow this time around. Gonna have to adapt a bit, because I was not responding correctly to enemy attacks. With the, brig with the brigands dispatched, the farmers turn to you. I hope your price doesn't improve too high. If the next harvest comes short, we'll starve regardless. Food. Precious food, the thing that stops you from dying horribly in this game. You fall on the food with a sigh, shoveling bread in your mouth to quell your hunger. There we go. Your satisfaction lasts only a moment before you realize your father's amulet is not among the takings. You consume one food. The leader must still have it. You set to your feet, determined to find them. So we're not done here. A friend in need. While enjoying a moment beside the fire, you spy a strange figure approaching your camp. It's a goblin, dressed in what you pass for goblin finery. Or dressed in what, what must pass for goblin finery. From beneath a filthy fox pelt serving as an ill-fitting wig, the goblin winks at you with wild red eyes. Aha! I've been roaming for hours trying to find you. We must get this over with quickly, if I have any hope to getting all the people on my list before sunrise. It lowers the sack from its shoulders. Now, th now from within my sack, I can conjure whatever your heart desires. The goblin's voice trails off as he examines his sack. Well, I could, if there wasn't a blooming great big hole in it. His head disappears entirely into the bag until his bulbous nose protrudes from the breach. A new plan, then. The goblin pulls out his last trinkets. Alright, so that's the full list of things I can get. Soldier sword, a shield, warrior's axe. Do I get to know what they are? 
Not sure. Let's try let's try the axe. Okay, we do have stats here. So critical strike is the finisher. Uh, requires a six hit combo, and then you do an attack that does 250% damage on a single target. Armor breaker. Against corrupted enemies, bash causes additional damage to the armored. Heavy. Bash deals additional damage to armored while, and enemies while they block. Susceptible to evade, cannot repost. So, hen so heavy enemy heavy weapons can't use repost, which I think is what you need to use. And if you want to do the counter that I was talking about earlier, 21 damage. Soldier sword. One-handed. It can repost enemy combo attacks. Additional defense from a shield is useful against northerners. This also has the crit strike, but it requires 10 hits. Repost against northerners. Repost deals 125% damage. Neat. Then you have a shield variation. It has shield reflect. Uh, use defend to reflect attacks from ranged enemies. Can only be equipped with a one-handed weapon. 10 defense. Let's try the sword. I don't know if it's what I have right now or not. We'll see. It's not what I have. I have a neglected, negle neglected sword. <laughs> don't know why I trouble with that one. Uh, main difference, this one has higher crit now. It has the bonus against northerners. And that's basically it. Uh, previous one is rusty, so the starting rusty items can't even be exchanged. And this one also does, does uh, 10 more damage. 2 more damage. A wise choice. Now I must go. There are many others I must visit before I can rest. The goblin runs off into the night, his fox wig flapping in the evening breeze. You can change equipment in the inventory. Let's do that. Or did I already do that? It auto- okay, it auto switched to the upgraded weapon. My normal shield only has four defense. Then we have adventurer's garb and hood. I think I dig this new inventory screen. Finding forest folk. Token. Can you find it? So now we have an indeterminate outcome. A thing where if we uh, do the correct outcome of this particular card, the token is added to our reward pile, which means that it will add specific cards to our deck of possibilities for the next game. But if I fail the conditions that lead to the next token, then we don't get that, and I have to try again next time around that this gets drawn again. Finding forest folk, your journey through the forest is interrupted by an inquisitive child. Are you searching for the forest folk? My uncle says that they used to walk these woods giving out, giving out gifts. I want to find one and ask for a lemon cake. As they dash off to peer under a nearby log, the child shouts back, Remember, if you meet the forest folk, give me a lemon cake. In the other direction, an eerie song hangs in the air. You attempt to find its origin. You follow the song through the thicket and stream until you find an open glade bathed in golden sunlight. You find an aged maiden, her posture bent like the bows of a forest. It has been twelve winters since I had a visitor. Her voice is a whisper, yet it thunders in your ears. You may visit me when you are in need, adventurer. This is yours now. Even if you lose the challenge, you have earned this token. There we go. So we specifically put it in the tray. I believe the token that he put off on the side, the one for the fool, off, off by his side, is uh, by the cards over there. That one is indeterminate. We get it if we complete and succeed at the objective overall, and then it'll be added. But the one in the tray, we get no matter what. So even if I die, and fail, that'll be added to the deck. Nothing could be more fitting now than meeting the mage who started this all. Or at least, started it all for you. The Royal Road. A trail of fallen trees and distraught farmers leads you to the thieves who had stolen your amulet. It seems their infighting has only gotten worse. The bandits surrounded their former leader, weapons drawn. Everyone will get their fair share. There's no need for violence, the leader implores. Whoever heard of a thief talk about fair shares, spits one. You turn up and boss us around. We've barely stabbed anyone. It's been days since I've stabbed someone. Days. 
The leader notices you approach and waves you over. As much as I'd love to continue this discussion regarding stabbings, I'm afraid I have urgent business with my associate here. As he greets you, he whispers, keep me alive and there'll be plenty of gold for your trouble. Let's see. You will play pain his blood firstly. Let's just bring up the amulet. Tell him gold cannot replace the amulet he stole. He holds up a finger. First rule of negotiation, never let them know what you want. Ah, uh, that's not a terrible point. Kill my associates and I will gladly return your amulet. Ever reliable, the thieves draw their blades to mug you. The leader hurries away to hide. What makes it- what- how did he become the leader in the first place? He seems to not be very leaderly. Give us your stuff or we'll stab you, growls one of them. And it's been days since we stabbed someone. You consider your options. Uh, fight? Yeah. You draw your weapon and prepare to deal with the miscreants. Tip, perform a uh, quick repost by attacking immediately after defending an enemy attack. Is that what they did instead of counters now, I wonder? Let's see. Ow. Thought I was gonna block it, but I guess I don't know how. Ow? Okay, I need to figure out how combat works in this game. There seems to be some significant changes. Like, the counter doesn't seem to be there. There we go. Oh, there we go. There's a block. God, okay. All the timing feels weird. There we go. There we go. That's a good sign. That's also a good sign. So I think they've changed things a bit. I'm not entirely sure yet, but... In the previous game, it had a bit of the Assassin's Creed and Batman problem, because they, they use the same combat system, more or less, and all of those games have an issue where if you just watch for the icon of the enemy attacking and then press the counter button, you can just basically avoid damage indefinitely by just countering everything. Uh, it doesn't seem to have the same power, or I'm doing it wrong. I'm not sure, but it's probably for the best if they change that, because it was... It, uh, had, I think it has, a uh, negative impact on the difficulty of, of games when you can just infinitely counter by just pressing at the right time. With the battle resolved, the thief leader nods in approval at the carnage before him. He holds out a hand. My name is Malaclips, bard extraordinaire. His smile fades under your withering gare, glare. Sensing your anger, he raises his hands and surrender. Wait, let's not be hasty. We're on the same side here. I'm an upstanding citizen, just like you. I've been working for the th with the thieves, yes, but only for the greater good. No, really. They were killing people before I came along. I know it seems bad, but look. He pulls out an amulet from his pocket and presses it into your hands. All is forgiven, yes? You stare at the amulet. It does not look familiar. Oh? Mal Mal Malaclip says, scratching his head. He opens a small satchel. So, which one is yours? Uh... Am I picking my origin here, I take it? So, do I get a description? I assume. Am, ju am I just picking one? It seems like I'm just picking one. Like, there's no description of what each one means or anything. A bird, a lion, a uh, pharaoh, and a bull, bison, something. Lion. Space lions, like in Twilight Imperium. You're gonna show me a lion, and you're gonna show me, like, a, a moon, and I'm like, I'm immediately like, oh, it's the Emirates of Hakan, go for it. The lion amulet. That suits you. Very similar facial structure. Say, you know what? I'm lonely. You're lonely. We should work together. You've prevented Malaclips the trickster. A, a name that I'm gonna stumble over a few times because it just... 
I can actually think of the word metalocalypse every single time. <coughs> we should probably get to know one another, seeing as we're going to be friends for life, Malaclips says. Tell me, where are you from? Wait, what's happening? Are we fighting? Or, or is it time to make my character now? Oh, it's character creation time. And right now he's looking like a lot of Fallout characters with that haircut. <laughs> Alright. What is that? Choose an appearance? Okay, the Dark Souls approach. The idea of, like, this is the land you're from. You can be bald. What, what am I doing? Oh, c hair color. You can move his head around a bit. The hair on the top, there's the bald, there's the also hair on the top, but more of it. <laughs> sure. Kind of a knot on top. Okay, so you, not a lot of options here. Just a just a couple of them basically. So that's black. Or is that more of a brown? Lighter brown. Probably go with that. Sure. And then you can change the... Oh, the amulet shows up on your chest. There it is. I see it. Is that the, uh, the, the grand total of character customization this time around? All right, I mean, it's more than we got last time. This can Does facial hair not exist this time around, though? That's weird, right? Weird. The last dude was bearded. And this time around, it seems like you can't even choose a beard. What is this? Outfit color. You can pick a color scheme. Could you zoom out so I can see his whole body when I do this part? Seems like a, the right call. I give you some options here. So very... Standard adventurer colors here. Dark, like blue and greenish looking colors here. Somewhat unusual, uh, like purple and white. Green and gold. I kind of don't want to do the generic color. I kind of want to do this one, I think. Sure. I'm not crazy though, that right? There's like only a handful of options total. Yeah. Huh. Surprisingly brief list. Do I want to go with white hair? Kind of. Sure. Some sort of weird quicksilver looking dude at this point. <laughs> from the Eastern Belt, eh? You don't say. Good sorts from the Eastern Belt. Very trusting. That's very trusting is the type of compliment you give when you're somebody who manip manipulates people. You know, like somebody called the trickster. Oh, by the way, I I mean, we, friend. We uh, uh, owe money to Vignus of the Thieves Guild. He's quite angry at us. We should journey to Meyer Bridge together to appease him. Some gold might help. Although, come to think of it, I'm rather busy. Malaclips eyes a pretty trader hiking up the road. So, it'd be best if you get the gold and I meet you there. Wait, we're not we're not going to work. We're not going along with this, right? It's blatant lies. Just manipulating. All right, he's just going he's just manipulating us. Oh boy, it's not over either. I thought that was, like, the tutorial, and then it was just gonna be over, but we're still going. We're still going, and I still have to deal with the health I lost, so I better step up and fix that going forward. Let us learn what sort you are. Strong. Clever. Wise. The circumstances under which you come here put the lie to that. 
Arm wrestling, you enter a competition of strength at a fair. A gold prize is available to the winner. In the first round of the competition, your opponent is the diminutive Roland, a halfling from a traveling troop of acrobats. Okay, two... These dice are another small game embedded in our game. Two orbs remaining. Our target is a roll of ten. Our... If it's three dice, our range of outcomes is three to eighteen, so hitting ten is not unreasonable. Now this is what I hope for when a game of chance instead of the, the cup game with the cards. How do I throw? Oh, press A to throw. There we go. Victory. You are learning. Learning? It's just a dice roll. Oh well. Yeah, and I, t I had two chances to get over a 10 once. Easy competition. Roland is no match for your strength. He gives a disappointed backflip off the table and collects his meager winnings, then cartwheels out the door. Huh. I guess they just didn't stand a chance at all, so I had the odds str very strongly in my favor for that one. You take your reward from the Pursuer on the way out of the tavern. When you return, you will compete in the next round for a larger prize. Water is a symbol for the many thoughts that churn beneath the surface. What is it you're thinking of? What concern is worrying at your mind? Let it fall into the waters beneath. Deep water. While crossing a stone bridge, you suddenly find yourself confronted by a villainous band. You could stand and fight the, fe the fiends, or throw yourself to the mercy of the river below. Ah, here's where the dice come in, huh? Dice target 11 on a 3 to 18. Or just fight them up front. Could just fight them. I kind of want to play with the dice mechanic a little bit. You dive over the side of the bridge just in time, plunging into the cold the cold water. Let's see what happens here. There we go. Alright, I like the little, the little dice game being built in here. Through a combination of luck and skill, you manage to avoid the worst of the river's hazards. You emerge on the banks further downstream. Cowardice is often rewarded in this game, because you'll go down these weird paths, and then they'll often have a branching story path that actually is leads to greater responses than not doing that celebrations in aid of what you see how quickly the actions of the usurper are turned into tales for children carnival nearing the sleepy hamlet of dulwich you find the villagers in the midst of some kind of celebration much of the activity concerns a large paper and wood statue depicting a fearsome warrior looming triumphantly over a prone lizardman you can follow the parade, ask the local what's going on, or carry on your way. Let's ask Chris some information. A friendly stable hand explains. In a bygone age, our town was beset by half-men, half-lizards. There was no food, no respite, and very little hope. Salvation came in the form of a nameless warrior who hunted the beasts for little more than a handful of coins and a crust of bread. He smiles warmly at the festivities. We honor the warrior like this. The statue is filled with food and gold, and we take turns smashing it to bits with our club. You're welcome to join us, and you may keep whatever falls out. Ooh. Yes? Yes, the prey and statue are winding their way into town and almost out of sight. Follow them! I can beat up a statue? I want to do that. The parade ends in the, the town square. You watch as the villagers take turns smashing the statue at the club and gathering the food and gold that spills out. A local notices your interest and asks if you want to turn. Yes. I should. Oh, I should have asked if they wanted to go first. Shit. Uh, that one. All right, that works. That's a, it's not a massive success, but it's kind of a success. I thought I was going to actually do it in game. The club strikes the chest of the the treat laden beast. Some gold falls out. You survey the spoils and try to scoop them up before anyone else can. Ooh. Welp. <laughs> before you can gather anything, a young child shovels uh, the bounty into a basket and scampers off. With your turn over, you leave. I lose the motion of the cards so often. <laughs> 
I like the dice roll thing. Here we come to the end of the beginning. Running errands for mages. This will become a theme, I dare say. You arrive at Meyer Bridge as the sun begins to dip below the horizon. You find Maliclips perusing a selection of cheeses by the market. Ah, if it isn't my good friend the adventurer. Did you bring the gold? Vignus has arranged to meet at the graveyard. Go to the graveyard? You wonder whether the spot was chosen for its seclusion or for its easy, bo easy body disposal. Vignus greets Maliclips with a sly grin. Looks like you turned up after all, and with a lackey in tow. We had our doubts, you know. A... It's the Ace... Of Greed. The Anarchist. Anarchist of Greed. I'm trying to figure out how to read... How to read that card, because it's got... It, bre it breaks the rules of how left to right, top to bottom works, because it, like... Anarchist, yeah, I think, is the first word you read. The Anarchist of Greed. But it's on the bottom of the... <laughs> like, it's got a giant letter on the left, but the, the word as a whole is below of greed. And it's like, what is this formatting nightmare? Vignus cracks his knuckles and giggles. Well now, Maliclips, convince me. What's to stop me cutting off your head today? You reveal your gold as Maliclips scrounges in his po pockets for some, too. The heavy satchel of riches lands in Vignus's feet with a thud that echoes through the silence of the cemetery. You lose 20 gold. That's our deal done, Maliclips says. Worry obvious in his voice. No need for any further troubles. I'm sorry, Mal, Vignus grins. You should have known the guild was never going to let you pay with cash stolen from our own members in the first place. Yeah, didn't really think about that. What do you mean? I said I lost 20 gold, though. Am I going to get that back if I win? I don't want to lose it. Vignus the Crazed. Treacherous and greedy, a dangerous combination. Anarchists throw flaming bombs that cause fire damage. Your armor is of no use to you here. As if I'm some greatly armored man. Sup? Nope. No, thank you. Ow. Woohoo! That was a close one. Ow. Missed my chance a little bit there. Ow. Oh, I rolled into him. It, it, it worked. It worked out surprisingly. So you have to do a. Ow, he followed me. So you have to do a manual finisher now on the big bads. Oh, god damn it. No, block his. Uh, I got some stuff to figure out still about how, how to do this game, apparently. I'm like, block that guy's attack, and then he just doesn't. I'm like, what? But what? <laughs> It used to be that in the last game, when there was a giant glowing icon over a dude, and you pressed the defensive button, that the defensive button would reflect, it would actually work on the dude that was the guy who triggered you, the icon. What the? I rolled away! Oh wow, combat feels weird now. Oh, this is gonna be a learning curve. Maliclips scratches his thin, his chin thoughtfully. It seems you could do with some someone savvy to help you navigate these tricky matters of diplomacy, like maybe killing everyone wasn't the best idea. Come, let us discuss our partnership over an ale or two. Well, we got the fool, I suppose. Well done. You have cleared the first challenge, and now we can move on to the next. And so far, I... So far, I seem like the fool. I almost died in the tutorial. What has gone horribly wrong? Oh no. Cardinal Blade and the Bastion of Purification. Market Thief, Tarts, Pies, and Exotic Lies. Fork in the Road and Arm Wrestling. Maliclips's Problem and the Trickster. 
and this is for the forest folk success. The Old Maiden. Welcome to my challenges. Together, we will traverse 22 paths of wisdom and despair in the hope of awakening. All right, this will be a change. So now I've got a whole map to navigate. Let's get started. <laughs> 